again and welcome back to my kitchen. Today I would like to share with you how I prepare and can fresh pineapple. Now a lot of you probably test your fruit um, for ripeness in uh, a lot of different ways. Uh, I want to tell you how I test pineapples for ripeness. Now um, you know you have the foliage on the top of your pineapple and most of the leaves on the outside are attached very, very firmly. Like, you know, you can just take and you can hang on one of these outer leaves towards the base of the pineapple and literally just hold the whole pineapple supported on that one leaf. But how I test for ripeness has to do with these leaves. At the top center of the stock here of leaves, if you can easily pluck out a leaf, you know that your pineapple is ripe. If those things are really hard to pull at the very top and center of the leaf um, grouping at the top of the pineapple, if it's hard to pull out, that means that you're right, your pineapple is not exactly ripe. Now mine are actually on the verge of literally being overripe because these, I'm not even hearing a, a, a snap, I'm not putting any effort into it at all. So mine are super ripe and maybe even a little overripe at this point in time. But I'm just gonna walk you through today how I prepare the pineapple for canning and how I actually can the pineapple. Now there's a lot of different ways of doing it and obviously you can just go ahead and cut them with a knife if you want to, you know, taking the core out and, and peeling the outside of the pineapples. Um, but pineapples are just kind of annoying because you know you get all those little eyes and pricklies and, and things like that. And I'm not a person who uh, really um, dotes on a whole lot of specialized kitchen tools. But as far as preparing pineapple is concerned, I have found a little specialized tool that I honestly, I don't know how I ever lived without it. And what that is, is it's a tool that's called a pineapple corer and slicer. Now they have them in a couple of different styles. They have them in these plastic styles and these you can find at your Walmart or um, I'm sure you can find them online too. But any local store, uh, grocery stores I've even seen carry these too. Um, they're I think still around, five dollars or less okay so you're not investing a whole lot of money in this tool and believe me it's gonna make your life so much easier if you are planning on canning pineapple um, they also do have a little bit better quality one that is made out of stainless steel um, it still has the same features I do want to warn you though if you get one of these stainless steel ones the teeth on the bottom of these things are literally razor, razor sharp. So be careful, obviously, with your hands. And um, I'll, I'll show you how I cut mine. But if you're going to be using a stainless steel one, please be mindful of your pan also. Because um, as I was preparing a couple of pineapples this morning, this thing just kind of like dug right into the, the pan that I'm using. So just a fair warning that these teeth on the stainless steel ones are super, super short, sharp. Um, but I'll just uh, page the camera down and we'll get started here today. Um, I think you're going to be amazed at how quickly the process goes and how quickly you can process um, pineapples uh, for canning. I do believe, I feel very firmly myself that um, as long as you can get fresh pineapple on sale, now I know that sometimes they are fairly expensive, but if you can get them on sale for close to a dollar a piece, you know, maybe even a dollar twenty-five, you are still saving money over purchasing pre-canned pineapple from your grocery store. So I do feel like this is an economical um, canning project to do at home as long as you can get them on sale. So I'm just going to page down and I'm going to get started and show you how it is that I get these pineapples ready for canning. So we'll get the camera page down here. I have a cutting board obviously as you can see and <clears throat> the directions to these little pineapple cutters actually say to cut the top of the pineapple off but leave the bottom on. And I have just found that I really don't like to leave the bottom on. It's just as easy to cut the top and the bottom both off. And it seems to work a little bit better for me because if the bottom of your pineapple is still connected, you're really having to work at getting these pineapple slices out of 
of this skin. So what I do is I just take and I cut both the top and the bottom of the pineapple. <clears throat> Get that down there. I think I'm going to prepare a couple of them here. I'm going to set those off to the side for just a moment. I'll get a couple of them prepared here so that I can show you on cam a couple of times how well this works. I think I cut that one maybe a little too close there. So get these off to the side. Now let's see if we're, let me page it down just a little bit more. Now with the tops and the bottoms, Sorry guys, I'm trying to get you adjusted there. Get this guy out of the way here. With the tops and the bottoms, what I do is <clears throat> I take and I create crushed pineapple out of this. So do not feel like by cutting the top and the bottom of your pineapple off, do not feel like you are wasting because you're not going to waste this. What I do is I just take a, um, a soup spoon, you know, not necessarily a teaspoon. You could use a smaller teaspoon if you want, but this is a soup sized spoon. Um, and I just take the spoon and I literally scrape the remaining parts of the pineapple, the good ripe pineapple, out of these tops. And as another little tip, did you know that you can plant these and grow these? Um, you can look into that. I'm not going to talk a whole lot about it, but you can take these pineapple tops and actually root them and grow your own pineapple. So save them or discard them. It's up to you. And the same thing with the bottom of your uh, pineapple. Just take the bottom that you've cut off and do the same thing. Just scrape out all that good pineapple that is still left on that, uh, on that outer skin. And this really makes, um, it makes a wonderful, wonderful crushed pineapple that we will also can, okay? All right, so I suppose I got a page down here just a little bit more for you. Yeah, I think you will be able to see what I'm doing there. All right, so I take my, my topped and bottomed um, pineapple there. Got, yep, I am a little bit overripe here, but we'll be able to get that all sorted out after we cut this thing. And what I do is I have an 18 quart roaster just down in my sink. And I prefer to do this in the sink, number one, because it's sticky, but number two, it really puts it at a much better um, working height for me. Um, because using these tools, you do have to kind of press down. But what I do is I put my pineapple just kind of in the corner of this um, this pan here and then you take your pineapple core or slicer and obviously it's in a circle you center that circle right at the core just right over the top of the core of your pineapple and then all you're going to do is you're going to twist and push this down clockwise all the way through your pineapple okay so you just, just like a corkscrew, you just screw this thing right on down all the way through your pineapple until you come out the bottom side of your pineapple. There we are. We are all the way through. Can you see we're all the way through there? And then what you do is you just lift out of the skin. You lift out your pineapple. Look at how fantastic that is. Okay, so now what I do is you remove the handle. Now there's these two little push buttons on the side of the handle. You can see the push buttons there. You just squeeze those to remove them from the tube. And then turn your device over and all of your sliced pineapple is going to just come off in a lovely sliced accordion. Look at how absolutely beautiful that is. No eyes on it, no pickiness, no nothing. And then what I do, I'm going to clean my device here. I'm Like I said, my pineapple is probably a little bit overripe, but 
Um, yours might be a little bit more firm. So then what you do is you take to get this core, you know, you have the core of the pineapple stuck in the core of this cutter. You just take a long handle and press that right out. And so here is the core of your pineapple. Now what I do with that is I cut it into about three or four different slices. Let me make sure that I have my, there's my proper knife. I cut this into three or four slices and I put that into a jar to make pineapple, um, pineapple vinegar, okay? So, and I ferment these just like how I ferment my apple cider vinegar. Um, I'm, and I'm not gonna get into that, but I do have a video on how to ferment apple cider vinegar and the process is the same for pineapple. So I'm gonna save those cores for making um, pineapple vinegar. And we'll get back here to what we have left. Now I'm going to take my skin and just set this aside for just a moment, but I'm gonna get the rest of the good pineapple off the bottom here. But I'm gonna set this aside for just a minute and we're gonna go back to this wonderful sliced pineapple. And then all you do, of course, is just slice it into your little triangle nibs. And that is how quick and easy it is, guys. It doesn't get any simpler than this. You can literally get an entire pineapple done in about two minutes this way with these slicers. These slicers are amazing. They are not very expensive at all. And um, I really think that if you're going to be canning pineapple, it's really one of those things that you just want to invest the $5 in and get yourself one of these tools. And I don't usually stump for uh, specialized kitchen tools at all. And so when I tell you, you're gonna like this one, I know you're gonna like this one. Um, Cause I don't use a whole lot of special things in the kitchen. You know, I do a lot of things just by hand, but this has just been a lifesaver to me. I love this tool. All right, so now we're gonna go back to that, uh, that pineapple skin that we cut off, okay? And you can see that all of the good pineapple has been removed. Now, the, the sweetest and best part of your pineapple flesh is the stuff that is on the outside of your pineapple. And even though we got that really, really clean, there's still really good pineapple in there. So what I do is I take and I just cut my rind, cut my rind in half lengthwise, okay? Just cut it right down lengthwise. And I take that spoon again, and I scrape out the remaining parts of good pineapple for crushed pineapple. So you go ahead and you clean these rinds just as well as you can, because like I said, this is the sweetest and the best part of the pineapple is what is out by this rind. This is just wonderful, wonderful stuff. And you can see, you can get quite a bit of crushed pineapple. You can even do it on your counter. Now I think it's gonna be off frame. You can't see, but I'll see if I can scrape a little bit more pineapple here um, by just laying the rind on my cutting board on the counter so that I can scrape a little bit harder with my spoon. And there you can see that I got a whole bunch more crushed pineapple. Now these pineapple rinds, before you start cutting your pineapple, if you want to use your rinds um, to either uh, add some water to and boil to make a little bit of pineapple juice, or if you want to use these rinds, like what I'm using my cores for, in order to make pineapple vinegar, um, make sure that you scrub up uh, with soap and water. Scrub up your pineapple really well with soap, water, and a brush and rinse them off good before you start cutting them. But I, I'm gonna have enough cores um, that I don't feel like I want to uh, ferment my skins this time. I have done it in the past, it works wonderfully, but today I just don't wanna do it. And so I'm just gonna dispose of these to the chickens myself. But you can use them um, for your pineapple vinegar also. And you can see, you know, like I said, with that cutter, it really, really cleans it well, but there is still a lot of usable pineapple on that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and take my spoon and get it scraped down off of 
that skin or rind. All right, so I'll finish this one up later. I will do one more since I prepared two of them. I'll do one more here for you so that you can see just how wonderfully easy these tools uh, make your job. So center it right down over the core. Press down and turn just a little bit to get it started. And then just start cranking it clockwise, pressing down as you turn all the way through that pineapple. And another reason why I do it in this pan instead of like on a cutting board is you will find that it's really juicy. And I want to collect all of that good natural pineapple juice so that I can use this in my canning jars along with my pine pineapple. So that's another reason why I always do it inside of a pan. All right, so I got all the way through that pineapple and voila, we have a beautiful extracted um, core of wonderful fresh pineapple and just no time flat. So again, you remove the handle, you remove the core, you have your beautiful sliced pineapple and you remove that core with your spoon handle and cut this up into oh about four sections to be used for pineapple vinegar. You can also use those cores, uh, like I mentioned for the rinds, you can also use those cores um, for pineapple juice by covering them, uh, just barely covering them with water and boiling them in a pan. And it makes a wonderful, wonderful pineapple juice. Uh, I'm just rinsing my hands off here, guys, and I'll get the camera back up. All right. So, like I said, that device for under $5, now the stainless steel ones, they do cost a little bit more, um, but of course, you know, as we all know, they'll probably last a little bit longer also, um, but I, I swear by this uh, slicer, I think you should run out and get one, especially if you're going to do a canning project with pineapples and you're preparing a lot of pineapples. I have 14 pineapples myself to do today. so. I'm just going to continue getting all of my pineapple, pineapple prepared off of cam and when I come back I'll show you how I put it into the jars and get it steam canned. So I'll be back in just a little while. All right so I am back and I've got all of my pineapple prepared. Now when you're packing your pineapple you can do quite a few different things with it. You can either use just the natural unsweetened um, pineapple juice that you have collected or you could use um, store-bought sweetened or unsweetened pineapple juice maybe you have apple juice you could cover your pineapple in your jars with apple juice you can also make a simple syrup um, which is just sugar and water that you boil on the stove to dissolve the sugar really well and you can use that or you can just use plain water and any of those things can be combined uh, today I'm going to pack in my natural pineapple juice and if I don't have enough of that to cover all of my jars then I'm probably just going to do just a simple syrup or plain water. But packing your pineapple is super simple. All you really need to do is just scoop up all of your pieces. Now you're not going to have to pack in your fruit very heavily. You know, you don't want to pack it tightly. Just kind of fill your jar. You did see me kind of moving around a couple of pieces and, and adding a few extras. You know, just do whatever feels comfortable for you. Um, but you don't want them packed super, super tight because you do want a little bit of fluid and a little bit of juice around your tender fruit at the end of it all um, to kind of protect them from the heat of the canner. Um, today I'm going to be steam canning. Um, fruit really only requires uh, either a hot water bath or a steam canning session. And today I'm going to be uh, going ahead and I'm going to show you how I steam can. But um, after filling all of your jars with your fruit, I'll get one more here done. Just 
just get them settled down in there a little bit. Add a couple more chunks to that. Now we can fill these jars up to one half inch headspace, okay? But after you get all of your solid fruit into your jars, then what you want to do is you want to add your fluid just to cover your fruit. So like I said, I'm using just the natural uh, pineapple juice, just straight um, from cutting the pineapple. And just go ahead and pour that over your fruit in your jars to one half inch headspace. There we are. Get these pieces out of my way so I can scoop a little bit better here. And like I said, if I do run short on uh, pineapple juice, I'm just going to go ahead and either make a simple syrup to cover the rest of them or I'm going to uh, just use plain water. Um, another thing you can do is that if you don't want to uh, sweeten with sugar, you know, a simple syrup of sugar and water, if you don't want to use sugar, you can use honey or even maple syrup and both of those things are absolutely delicious when used with uh, pineapple in my opinion so it's very flexible you do whatever you want to do um, fruit is a high acid food and particularly pineapple pineapple is pretty high in acid and this is a very safe canning project and so there's not a whole terrible lot of rules to it except to process it um, you know for the proper time and I will tell you that when we get over by the stove but after you have packed your fruit and your juice to one half inch headspace then of course go ahead and clean your rims with just a clean wet washcloth wipe the rims of your jars off and go ahead and place your clean lid and ring to fingertip tight and that's all there is to it then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to process that either in a hot water bath or a steam canner um, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of my jars here get all of my pineapple packed and we'll move on over to the stove I'll uh, do this last one here. I suppose I should talk about the crushed pineapple also. Now the crushed pineapple is canned in the very same way. So I will move this, all my clean jars here, and you do the very same thing for the crushed pineapple. Um, just go ahead and fill your jar with your solid crushed pineapple. Put a little bit more in there and then just top off with just a little bit of your juice just to make sure everything is good and wet in there okay and to that same one half inch headspace now the crushed pineapple you might want to uh, debubble now generally you guys know I'm not one I don't debubble everything but um, the crushed pineapple you actually may want to debubble and I'll show you exactly why because in the crushed pineapple you can get big air pockets that are trapped and you don't want those am I turning it the right way you don't want these big air pockets in your canned goods so I am going to debubble the crushed pineapple the sliced pineapple I never have any problems with and I don't no normally have to debubble that um, so after de after debubbling, sorry, I seem to be stumbling over my words here all of a sudden. After debubbling, you might want to add just a little bit more fluid to top off to that half inch headspace again. All right, and the same thing there. Then you go ahead and you wipe that rim really good. Just make sure that you don't have any sticky juice or crushed pineapple on the rim of your jar, and place your lid and ring fingertip tight okay so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pack the rest of my pineapple and then I'm gonna meet you over on the other side of the kitchen by the stove and we'll get to canning so I'll be back in just a minute okay so I got everything moved over here to the stove 
Today, I am going to steam can my pineapple. Now, steam canning is exactly the same safety factor and effect as hot water bathing. So you can either hot water bath, traditional hot water bath, where you submerge your jars under two inches of water and bring it to a rolling boil and then time for 15 minutes. Or, like me, you can use your stove top pressure canner as a steam canner. And once you reach a full vent, then you can start timing for 15 minutes. So pints of pineapple are canned. Um, I can pints of pi pineapple at 15 minutes and quarts I can for 20 minutes. So I've got two or three quarts of water in my canner today and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna double stack. I've got enough jars today that I'm gonna go ahead and double stack. So I have a rack on the, on the bottom layer of my jars. I've got, you know, a layer of jars already in my canner. I placed a, an extra rack on top of those and now I'm just stacking my second uh, layer of jars on top. And, uh, you know, when you're double stacking pints, it does take a little bit longer for everything to heat up. Look at that. I'm not even going to be able to fit them all in. I have one extra jar here, but that's okay. I've got some quarts that I need to can yet too. Um, but anyway, uh, what was I saying? Oh, when you are uh, double stacking, um, either in the pressure canner or to steam can, you need to keep in mind that you are heating so much food up that it may take a while for your canner to actually come to a vent. Because think about it, you've got like what, 16, 18 pints of food in there. And by the way, my pineapple is all at room temperature and my canning water is at room temperature. Um, but it, it will take a while for all of these pints of food to heat up so that the um, canner can actually come to a full vent. So don't be concerned when it takes a little while for all of that stuff to warm up. But when I'm warming, warming my canner up, as always, I always only do it over medium heat because that avoids a lot of your siphoning issues. You know, don't, don't heat your canner too uh, quickly. And especially when you're coming from cold or room temperature food, um, that drastic change and heat up period can actually cause thermal shock on your jars also. So I always only heat over medium heat. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place my lid on the canner. I've got two or three quarts of water in here and a little bit of cream of tartar. I use cream of tartar as most of you probably already know. I use cream of tartar um, when I'm pressure canning or steam canning instead of using vinegar in my canning water to keep the calcium and lime deposits off of the outside of the jars. I feel like uh, cream of tartar is a little bit more gentler on today's modern rings and lids. Um, it's not as corrosive and not as harsh on them. So I'm just going to heat over medium heat. And when my canner comes to what I consider a full vent, which is my emergency pop off button is, or my emergency blow off button will kind of come popping up into the upright position and my lid lock uh, pressure vent will pop up on its own also. And steam will only be coming from my uh, weight vent pipe. Um, so now when all those things happen, that is when I'm going to start timing my process. But you want to reach a complete full vent before you start your timing process. So we're gonna steam can these wonderful pints of pineapple for 15 minutes and I'll come back when that process is done and show you the beautiful results. I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, so my canner has heated up and it is almost to what I consider a full vent. Now it's not quite an old fashioned full vent yet because my lid lock button hasn't popped up and you can see that there's steam still escaping from it. So I'm just gonna wipe the pooled I'm sorry, I have a hair bothering me here. <laughs> I'm gonna wipe the pooled uh, water that sometimes happens on Presto canners. I'm gonna wipe that away. My emergency blow off button has come into the upright position. And now my lid lock button is in the upright position too. Can you hear that popping up and down? Hopefully you can see it. Anyway, this is now what I consider a full vent and this is the point in time that I will start my 15 minute canning process. So I'm just going to set my timer for 15 minutes. I'm not going to move the heat at all as long as your heat is on medium or high enough you know you have to 
adjust it for your stove. You guys all know how your stoves work. I can keep mine on medium heat and it is enough to keep the pressure valve lid lock button up and also keep the blow off emergency button in the upright position. So I'm literally just gonna walk away at this point in time. We are never going to place our weight at all because we are not pressure canning, we are steam canning or i.e. water bathing. So in 15 minutes, I will come back and I'll show you how I cool this canner off um, in a little slower way so that you avoid even more siphoning problems. So we'll be back in 15 minutes. Okay, we're back after the 15 minute steam can time. And like I said, just never place your weight and vent your pressure canner the entire process time. So all I'm gonna do is turn off my heat and allow my lid lock pressure valve to drop in its own. And because we were not under pressure, this will happen a lot quicker than if you are doing a regular pressure canning system. So once this drops down, then you can crack open your lid and um, I'll show you how I cool off the canner just ever so um, slowly so that we avoid all sorts of siphoning issues. So after this drops down in just a minute, I'll crack open the lid and show you how I cool the canner. All right, guys, my lid lock pressure valve button has dropped down and my emergency blow off button has dropped down. So now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack open my canner and I'm just gonna move the lid just ever so slightly and allow this to cool for another 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn my canner here so hopefully you can see, whoop, it just dropped back down. Hopefully you can see what I do here. And I do this for steam canning and I also do this for pressure canning and now I'm, I'm burning myself with steam. There we go. I just take and I just crack it just ever so slightly and I allow it to cool for 10 minutes. Now I'm going to come back and I'm going to, um, in 10 minutes, and I'm going to move that lid back just a little bit more and allow it to cool for another 10 minutes. This is a really good way of allowing your canner to cool off just a little bit more gradually and slowly instead of just removing that lid right away and allowing all the cold room air to rush into your extremely hot canning environment. And what that does is that cold air pushes into the canner and pushes that hot food and fluid out from underneath the lids of your jars. So if you just take a little bit more time and allow your canner to cool off just a little bit slower, you're gonna avoid a lot of those issues. So in 10 minutes, I'm gonna come back and push this back just a little bit more and allow it to cool longer. All right, so I have allowed my canner to cool for 10 minutes. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this lid back just a little bit more and allow it to cool for another 10 minutes before I remove the lid completely. So after this next 10 minute period, I'll be back and we'll take the jars out. All right, so. I steam canned my pineapple for 15 minutes and then I cracked open my lid and allowed it to cool for 10 minutes. I pushed my lid back just a little bit more and allowed it to cool for another 10 minutes. This just as I've said before in other videos and whatever, it kind of avoids some of that siphoning um, that can happen when there's such a drastic change between the cool room and air temperature and the hot area inside of your canner. So here is our beautiful pineapple completed. Isn't that lovely? I still get so excited about things. I'm going to tip the tip the camera down here just a little bit more as I remove these. All right. So we'll just take them all out of the canner here and set them on a thick a thick bath towel as you can see to protect the hot jars from the cold counter and that avoids thermal shock also so always have a nice thick towel to bring your hot jars out of the canner and set them on to allow them to cool all right those look beautiful now today i am using superb canning lids 
Um, Superb is an amazing product. I am so impressed with the Superb lids. They're better quality. They're thicker. They have um, better sealing compound on them. And um, they seem to have, in my experience with them now, I've been using them, oh, I would say maybe close to a year at this point in time. Um, they seem to have a better uh, sealant on the inside of, um, of the lid too. I'll just, I know this really doesn't have anything to do with canning, uh, with canning pineapple, but since I'm talking about it, <clears throat> I'll get them out here. Here's my superb lids. These lids are just such good quality. They're thicker lids. There's not a whole lot of, uh, you can't bend them really easily at all. They're just nice and thick. The sealing compound is just amazing on these and the coating on the inside of the lid. Now you can see that these are gold lids, but the coating, um, the protectant coating on the inside is just outstanding also. So I am really, really impressed with this product. But anyway, so on my, uh, on my large mouth uh, jars today, I use the superb lids. And on my regular mouth jars, I used the four jars lids. And I'm really impressed with the four jars lids too. Since I'm talking about it, I'm gonna get those out. <clears throat> These are the four jar lids. Um, let's see if I can get another one apart here. Um, you can see that they have their logo, whoops. You can see that they have their logo on them. And these are really good quality lids too. They're not flimsy, they never buckle, and they have a really good sealing compound and a very good internal protective coating also. So these are the two products, the Four Jars and the Superb. Those are the two canning lids that I rely on completely these days. Um, I'm just super impressed with both products. So, okay, I will get out a few more of my jars here and uh, let them cool on the counter um, for at least 12 to 16 hours. Now, never touch your hot jars um, after you've taken them out of the canner. I know sometimes today that these screw-on bands can get a little bit loose in canning. Um, that is just due to poor quality um, that we're just all getting. Um, but don't touch your jars after you take them out of the canner. Allow them to sit completely untouched for at least 12 to 16 hours. And at that point in time, you should be able to easily tell whether that lid is uh, sealed or not. And then, of course, um, at that point in time, remove the screw-on band um, and wash your jars well in, in warm, soapy water. Um, the reason why I suggest that you do that is because if you have had any siphoning where juices or greases or whatever have pushed up out from underneath your flat lid, all of those things get trapped in these screw-on bands. You need to, after they have cooled and sealed, remove those screw-on bands and wash your jar up really good. Um, that does two things. It makes sure that nothing is going to mold in storage and also it helps to prevent um, them from drying bugs. And I store all of my jars with the rings off. And the reason why I do that is because it is really important in storage um, to have those rings off, in my opinion. I know this is another one of those controversial things, but in storage, I feel it's really important to have those rings off so that you can see if for whatever reason, for whatever reason, your food inside of the jar starts to spoil. Most of the time that lid will come off, it will come loose because sometimes gases and things can build up with that spoiling food and you want that flat lid to be able to be pushed off just by those building gases. If you have that screw on band holding that false lid in place, that false seal in place. Those gases build up and are trapped inside of that jar and you can actually have jars explode in storage. Now that doesn't happen very often. Sorry, that was a fly. <laughs> that doesn't happen very often, but it is not beyond the realm of possibility. And I have actually had a jar explode in storage before because I left the bands on. So 
I really encourage everybody to remove those screw-on bands when you go to store your jars. So wash your jars up, um, leave those bands off, and then label your product with what the contents are and the date that you canned it. So I hope that you have found all of this informative. I really appreciate you spending your time with me again today. God bless you all and happy canning everybody.